I'm Sonia Morton Firth and you're watching the Sonia Morton Firth Show. Today I'm live from the ministry and I'm really excited because my guest is Brandon Block. He rose to fame in the late 1980s and 1990s as a DJ and today he's still getting people on the dance floor. His hedonistic lifestyle had led him to being given only two weeks to live. Now Brandon helps thousands by raising awareness over mental health issues and drug abuse. On his platforms, Happy Days and more recently Tuned Out, which gives people a voice to share what they've been through. Brandon, thank you so much for being on my show. It's a pleasure and I'm really, <coughs> I'm really honoured to you to come to the ministry tonight to meet me, to do the interview. I'm really, really happy and I'm really, I'm really excited to be on your show and I'm really good luck, good luck. Good luck with what your, uh, you know, your future holds. I think it's uh, Thank you. a great journey you're on, so well done. Thanks, Brandon. Well, we're here tonight because you're, you're, doing, you're doing Tuned Out, but before we talk about that, yeah. how did you get to where you've got to today? Tell me a little bit more about your life and okay. how you became a DJ. Oh, go on. Uh, well, look, I, 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 it will be brief because... It will be brief, really. It's quite... It's quite uh, no, so, uh, theoretically, I grew up in the 80s. I didn't grow up in here, I was born in the 60s, but I, I, I did most of my, I think probably actually no, I've probably done most of my growing up now, but I think uh, my music stuff started in the 80s and uh, I was, uh, you know, I was involved with um, the local funk patrol and roller skating group and dancing group and skateboarding and we all sort of knocked around together and I was in the jazz funk patrol and uh, uh, my love of black music just took me to all the clubs in London and ended up dancing with some of the craziest and best dancers in London. I'm actually quite a good dancer when my back's oh, not so bad. Oh, I'll have to test that out. Bit of a knee spin going on. Anyway, so that was sort of my lead into music. Uh, DJing wise, we used to drink in a pub called the John Lyon. Myself and my best mate, Ali, uh, we, we was always in there. And then the, the, the boss said one day, look, the geezer's not turning up, the DJ who's resident. Mm. You lot got your records, go home and get them and play because they had decks there. They weren't, they were all really crappy things. But we went home, got our milk crates of records, came back, played music, and, um, and he said, Well, you might as well have the job each week because you know, everyone's come to see you, it's been great, blah, blah, blah. So we went on, that was 1985. The irony of it is the name of our disco at the time, Mobile Disco, it became Ecstasy Disco. Really? Yes. This is before the days that the, the day, rave scene the really so, took off. Should have seen the, uh, yeah. seen the, seen the, the, seen uh. the signs, let's say. So um, that's how I started on my musical yeah, journey. Yeah. Progressed from pubs to clubs, uh, and then clubs came with drugs, drugs, club, bub, drugs, excuse me. That's quite Drugs, pubs, 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 pubs. <laughs> yeah. pubs clubs, <laughs> drugs, <laughs> right? Um, the latter got the better of me in really badly. I lived in Ibiza, and back here in my DJing career took really, took really off in that yeah. whole. 80s acid house scene, let's say. Uh, I was very successful and very, very grateful to this day to where mm. I ended up, and you know, I'm still doing it to this day. But what happened to me was that the, the drugs took a real bad hold of me. I ended up with a, one of the worst habits, I say, when I took my mentor, who's my psychiatrist, who saved my life, who mm. I still see because it will make sense. I still see him because uh, I give him my caseload. I still end up working in the mental health and yeah. drugs and alcohol yeah. thing. So I'll tell you more about that yeah. in a minute. So, um, I had a very bad problem. I'm not gonna. You nearly died, right? Yeah, he gave getting, you two uh, weeks to I live. Two weeks to live, yeah. basically. If I carried on from that moment, and that's when I suppose the penny started dropping. Uh, I then ended up the next week. How did you feel when he said that to you? I was ready to go. In all honesty, you just ready to give up? Yeah, I was ready. I thought, well, I, if I'm going to keel over, I'll just, I'll just carry on until it happens. But then what happened was my illnesses, which I had. I had TB, hepatitis, chemical depression, chemical hepatitis, chemical this. Uh, this was just this was cocaine, right? The, the, mo was the for the most part, most part. Uh, I was boozing still, um, but that wasn't my drug of choice, as mm. they say. Cocaine was the one that took me to the depths of depravity. Uh, so I was, um, uh, I say, entrenched in that whole cycle and behaviour. Uh, I then came out of the meeting with him and said, right, okay, and I, had a, I sort of had a choice, I suppose. This is where my penny dropped. I was in the hospital again that week in the A&E department holding my, like this yeah. and scratching and all these, I was ready to, in agony. And the, the drugs were no longer masking the pain. The painkillers were no masking the pain. The, the, you know, all the, the benzo, the, none of the drugs I was taking, none of it was masking the pain because I was dying. My body was giving up on me. And so. did you have people around you that, that you know, friends, family, oh, people I mean, that... The, you couldn't tell me anything. 
It wasn't, uh, yeah, and, and unfortunately, when you get into that state, no one can. You have to be ready to do it yourself. You have to come to that decision because. And what? What was that? Switch? Well, this is what I'm sitting in that hospital and I'm thinking, I, 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 how long is it until I go? Because I cannot carry on like this. And then my summit decides, so well, you're not going to go that quickly. So make a decision. Do you want to carry on or do you want to just stop? And I, I sort of went, I've had enough. I've had enough of this battle in my mind. I've had enough of this whole behaviour and cycle I'm in, of, of, of getting and using. And I just said, this is enough. And at that moment, my, I felt my brain drop like a clunk. It went boom. Like all the neurons from the antagonistic thoughts going on, like do I, don't I, should I, shouldn't I, blah, blah, blah. And it always went bang and it clicked. My brain went So I think all the anxiety and the under, underlying stress that I've been under mm. just left. And I had a moment of clarity, although I was still really ill and still caught up in the whole process, but it just went, and I went, took a deep breath and went, wow. I had a moment, that moment of clarity. Unfortunately, I say unfortunately, it didn't last because what happens is when you, then you start your journey. So I had that moment of clarity. I didn't, I then spoke to the Bill, my psychiatrist, I go, said, look, I'm ready, I'm coming. I'm coming in. He went, okay, so you come in when you're ready, and I said, I said, he said, yeah, I will make you better. So I, that weekend, it was literally like the Friday or something, so I had to go out the weekend, and I said, I'll come in on the Monday, which led me to the biggest session I've ever had on that weekend, in fact. And I said, no, I'm not going to go mad. And then on, on the Sunday night before I was going to, I, I went, so you went hell bent, bent. hell bent for that. Was it one of those, a bit like before you go on a diet, and I'm not the same, but I'll chuck everything into my mouth after probably, one day. Of probably start. about a million times worse. Yeah. But it left me literally crawling, trying to climb buildings at the end of the night, oh, trying to find the last hit. And um, all the people had gone to bed. It was like five in the morning. I was going in at nine. I'd have made seven trips that evening back and forwards to various houses and taken everything I'd got, every single bit. And I went home and I scraped my carpet for every bit and I'd I get loads out of that. And then I was also smoking crack as well and I was on the pipe for a long time. Oh, God. Yeah, that, I forget about that. I mean, lucky that didn't take hold of me either because I, I, I think I saw the, the downside of that and I wasn't prepared. See, I was in fairly coherent. Anyway, so um, that stopped and I, I went in on the Monday. They took everything off me. I had loads of rogue hypnols because I was taking loads of sleep and I was aware, unaware of, you know, what they were. Just I knew that they made me sleep for an hour and then I was awake again. So. <laughs> So not long as, as long as, you know, as long as the other stuff I was doing, the sleep deprivation, the entire sort of time I was awake. Anyway, I went in the clinic. I, I stayed there for two weeks. I came out to do a interview for Radio 1, blah, blah, blah. And the inevitable happened. They said, don't leave the clinic. And I did. And I went and I, I found something. And it, it was like nowhere near what I used to take. Nowhere near, not even an inconceivable amount, but it had this mad effect. I mean, my, fuck, my heart went, my, fucking, my brain went. So obviously I've been doing this work and it was like, oh, I'm actually not in control here. Like, this is gone. And I thought, that's it. And that was the moment. That was the moment when it actually set in. And I never went back, never relapsed. For you, how did you replace that feeling of being on the... Well, the problem uh, is, you see, and, and, and uh, this drugs. is... It's, 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 <sighs> Because I, look, what I know now, what I've learned now about how this works and how uh, the, the, the cycle works, let's say the cycle of behaviour change, is that we are creatures of habit. Every mm. human's an addict. I don't mm. care. I'm going to throw that out of there because unfortunately it's true. No, I, I, I agree. We're, I mean, I'm, we, you know, we, there might be different stages of it or different... Well, not different stages, just different, different, different addictions. Just, yeah. I just think the word is very... The, the label addic addict is a very, you know, difficult label for people to deal with. Unless you, if you accept it, you say, oh, I'm an addict. You go, well, but so, so am I. We're all the same. Mm. I think yeah, once you accept that, you know, we're creatures of habit, we aim for pleasure, we want to do so. If something makes us feel good, we're going to do more of it. Of course. And if it's a substance, it, it, the reason we take substances often is because it acts quick. You don't have to work for it. So if you go to the gym, you feel great, but you have to put half hour, two hours, yeah. three hours work. Live, live, quite the work. same either. But yes, <laughs> well, it's quite the same. But, you know, it can it, be. It's yeah, fundamentally, it's what we need to do. Yeah. We exercise, exercise our bodies and our minds. Whereas if it's a substance, it's a quick fix. And often your environment doesn't allow you to maybe go to the gym or maybe go for a run or do what, maybe your environment is just difficult and you just go for the quickest fix. And that's what your mind will tell you. Because it wants the quick change. It doesn't want to work so there'd be happiness. Because I think over the years, and from what I've been reading lately, the programming that's been done to us subconsciously as a species, see the clever buggers 
the philosophers and all the people who thought a long, long time ago and actually started thinking. Well, they were all on something, weren't they? Well, they but created different, systems. different well, things. Maybe like, who knows what they were doing, but they they realised the potential of power and knowledge, and they instructed people, small groups of people, to become conditioned. And over the years, it's been handed down through the centuries, through the generations, blah, blah, blah. And that's how we are in systems that we are now. And I've read I, that book, Sapiens, is just incredible. I loved it. And yeah, I'm I need to that read book. that. A lot of people have recommended um, that. I'm quoting you know, Yuri Novel Hari. Anyway, Hari, that's the name of the guy. So, but, so if you think about these systems set in place, mm. so the, the routines you get into with the drugs or the alcohol or whatever your bad behaviours are, um, they become entrenched. They become... Yeah, the habits. Autopilots. Yeah, yeah, autopilots, yeah. Habits. Yeah. Uh, so I go to the gym every day. That's a good autopilot in a, in a way, but it's still it's it's, an obsession. As long as you don't it's obsession. obsess about it, yeah. then it's good. Yeah. But if you sit there going, I've got to go to the gym, I've got to go to the gym, I've got to go to the gym, I can't leave the gym. You're obsessing. Yeah. It becomes problematic because it overtakes your life. So mm. you have to find a balance with everything. Uh, the bad side of drugs is they're also illegal, they're very bad for you, they can cause illnesses, but alcohol's the same. Alcohol's yeah, alcohol's probably worse than alcohol's worse. lots of the other Cigarettes, stuff. Cigarettes, I mean, yeah, you put them both. Okay, so going back to... So, uh, so how did you really get, how did you get through it in terms of the mental side well, of it? Well, you know, it's a journey, and I think this is what we have to realise that... What I'm saying, so these behaviours become entrenched, and the cycle, you went back to what you asked me about, yeah. how do I feel the void? Well, you don't, because there's a, there's a, there's a, a psychiatrist called, um, not De Clementi, it's Prosca. De Clementi did, um, oh, Prosca, um, I'll have to read up again. I did Clementi. Anyway, so basically, there's a jug full and a jug empty, right? So when you empty yeah. that jug and you haven't got this one full, there's the void. So what you do is you empty it slightly. So it's not often that people will do what I did and just stop everything overnight. No. It's, well, it's well, obviously it's, a process to change well, it. Yeah, but, completely. I mean, in one way, I took it to the max I could, which was dangerous, but on the other hand, it took me to such a place that I made that decision and I never went back. So mm. I had that power to go... It's all or nothing, right? Yeah. Um, but it's not the same now. I'm not like that now. So all that stuff about addictive personalities... I was going to say, because do, do you believe in that? Because I, I always say I've got an addictive personality. No, I think to, it's wrong to, to say it. that. I have. Why would you say that? To say what? Because I'm doing something that I like doing. It's what you do. I mean, addictive personality. Well, maybe it's society's condition just to say that. Is. Of course it is. It's labelling. And you know what? Um, so anyway, look, I think... No, I don't agree with that. I don't think... I think you can change your thinking, you can change your behaviours, you can change your, the way you look at life, and you can change all your perceptions by thinking differently and reprogramming. So you are... All that genetic stuff that they now know is available. So it doesn't mean you, 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 what you carry through is in your genes. You can change your genetic structure by thinking differently and commanding you, you know, your, your pineal gland, yeah, all that yeah. stuff, and hypothalamus. Makes sense, right? Because we are neuroplasticity. We're creatures of... How can you... If creatures are so programmable, how can you create such mentally wonderful things? Mm, no, no. Uh, without yeah. the creativity of it's being creativity. constricted at, at addiction. You come out of that, you create. Mm -hmm. You get out of that cycle, you create. So, there, yeah. there's a point in fact. One doesn't, you know, work with the other. No. So that's my, only my experience and my, what I believe. <coughs> anyway, so... Do you believe the drug stilted or stunted your career? A million percent. Because you, 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 that's what we think about. You can't think about anything else, because that's, but, but what it did do is make me get it creatively. Yeah. So I had a whole book of who I had to pay when and when I did over of like a four or five day cycle, which I rigidly stuck to. So that was my structure of paying Peter to pay Paul. And then when I would go to, this is my mental, this is me telling them, like, they won't know what I'm doing because they haven't seen this lot. They all knew because they all spoke to each other. I was like, them lot on a Monday, they're not Tuesday. They're not so I go and see Monday saying, right, well, they, they you probably say that I've seen them Tuesday, but I won't tell the Wednesday lot. So it doesn't look like I'm doing too much. They all knew. Everyone knew, have you seen him? Yeah, I've seen him. You've seen him, you've seen him. We've seen him, we've seen him. And, and that's why it worked. So it was, it's absolutely crazy when I think about it now, you know? And the fact that I was living that life thinking, no one knows. Everyone knew. And it was dire. I think my mum was the only one, God bless her, who didn't actually have a real Did good understanding. Know? Thank God she didn't, because, you know, it, it, it when you came out, because you were in Celebrity Big Brother, but we don't need to touch too much on that, but you well, came out after a week. Big Brother, yes. Yeah. So listen, it was a, it, 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 look, for me, it was a great... Uh, I still get grateful that I was offered to do it, Celebrity Show. 
I've still considered something in that vein, which meant a lot to me a few years ago because it was something else which added to, as you said, where would you do with the void? Well, some of the infamy filled the void for me because okay. I got some of the okay. chemicals yeah. from the fame yeah. and the, the celebrity, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, it doesn't mean not that to me anymore because I'm going to let that go, but it was in the celebrity Big Brother house. But I just finished working for the NHS, working with people with real life mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm doing outreach, going to their houses, working very, very closely with them, uh, intense support, changing small parts of their lives, fingers crossed, hopefully for the better. And I took a lot of it on board because I had an empathy. Yeah. Because I've been there, in a way. Um, and I had this innate wanting to help people, but I do it a lot. I want to help people a lot, which maybe, you know, was a bit too much for them. So I came in this house and I was doing my self-therapy because I'd taken burnout while I'd left that job in the NHS. They hadn't supported us the right way. So uh, it was actually the company called, who weren't the NHS, I'm really working under the umbrella of the NHS. So uh, we didn't get the support we required. Uh, consequently, I get burnout and I go into the Big Brother house with burnout. So I'm actually okay. feeling emotionally drained, yeah. mentally drained, yeah. physically drained, a whole lot. And I'm supposed to be someone that they still, and think, and and still thinks is existent in the room and he's not. Mm. I mean. It, it, if I was like I am now, I'd have been much more integral in part of the house, but I wasn't. And I, I, it just for me, the psychiatrist who turned out being a very good fan of mine, who was a mate, and we turned to be mates, I saw him every day in the house, and he said, look, he, he, he said, I can't, see, I can't see you do this to yourself in here. Mm. He said, you're putting yourself through therapy, it's not good, not on telly. I said, okay, he said, look, you can go. And I went, oh, I'll leave. So I left all the money, and left everything, I just left. Um, but it's experience, you know, and, and looking back, look what I've got now. I've, it led me to the world that we're, we're in now. So tell me about that world, personal development. What, well, no, see, I don't like that word either. You don't, so what, go on, tell me, because I'm, obviously you know I'm, right, I'm so, in this world and I've got to agree with you. So, Why don't you like the word? Well, it's, 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 it's personal, it means it's mine. Personal mind, but it's not, it's well-being. Yeah. It's about well-being. Yeah. And what we're creating is well-being for many people, not just for yourself, right? So that's it. that word, if you say it's personal development, you say, well, you're just developing yourself. Well, it's growth, growth. Well, it's growth, it's growth. But yeah, who, else, who else are you helping? Because if you go to some of the, the bigger life coaches who, who, who advocate for this lifestyle, mm. where's contribution in personal growth? You contribute well, yeah, to yourself. Well, yeah, because yourself, yeah. You see, help yourself, isn't it? Yeah. So we change the word. I use a different word. Mm. I use it as well-being well or self-enlightenment. Self mm. Okay? I mean, self is self, but selfless. Or selfless enlightenment. Selfless. Selfless is nice. Self selfless enlightenment. Is nice. There you go. Selfless, selfless person development. Selfless. Well, there you go. So that's more where. So when I went and experienced that whole, uh, I did, Tony Robbins, I loved the event. I mm. loved going to the UK. I think just the energy is fantastic. But what, what, what frustrated me was how much it costs at the back of the room. And, and if you're, for me, when I was, because I deal with, I mean, I, I live with vulnerable people, very mm. vulnerable people who didn't they have a penny. Don't have that money, yeah. And then, and you look at people who, even in this world, we know about mental health, the state of the, the, the world in mental health. And if you, if you, even people who are, who seemingly aren't, they're all vulnerable. And we, we've all got a mental health. Mm. A mental health is mm. how healthy it is. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So no, no, yeah, if we're not in the place of feeling great, which a lot, often it's not, this is why tuned out's you know, happening, but a lot of us are not feeling great. We, we are under the pressures and the, of the comparisons, the expectations of the world we live in, which are often well beyond our means. And, well and we had you know, Suicide Prevention Day yesterday. Um, and we're doing a fundraiser next month because it's World Mental Health Day, which the theme is suicide prevention. Okay. So we're doing a fundraiser for next tuned out on the 9th of October. And Johnny Benjamin speaking. So tell me about Happy Days and Tuned Out and okay. what they're all so, about. Because they're so us. move it. Let's yeah. go. To briefly, I'll just briefly cap on recap on what that last bit was. So self development or selfless development. Let's say so the giving back bit. Great. Uh, I I wanted to so Happy Days. So what it was, we sat in a room. I thought. I thought, you know what? And I went to the Yes Group. Carl was my mentor for yeah. a period of time. He's my just coach. everyone. Yes Group is is a personal. Development, growth, selfless community. Self growth, <laughs> self -growth and, and, and community. You, and what it means is you say yes to a lot of things because often you know, look, it's great to be able to say no for the right reasons, but it's also great to say yes to things that you'd be fearful of or things that would often keep you in a yeah. place of 
Push yourself uh, stagnant, outside your comfort zone. Yeah. In a stagnant place. Okay, so Yes Group and Carl, who I've known for 30 years because he employed me first as a DJ in a uh, club. Yes, in the Astoria in the, back in the old yeah, days. Yeah, so there's a lot of synergy yes. there. Um, anyway, so I went to the Yes Group. He, let, he allowed me to speak for my first time ever in public. Uh, which was great, and I, I, I got some very good feedback. And I sort of thought, I think, you know, then my story became valuable because then he, he, everyone was saying, Christ, have you been, you don't know what you've been through. And I'm like, I never gave myself credit, which we often don't because we, you know, when, it, we, when you live in a world of comparisons, you're always comparing yourself to someone else and not being you. You're a worst critic. Totally. And then we decided how can we use the tools that I'd learned in the drug and alcohol field, yeah. which are transferable, they're not unique to that, it's mm. not about you know, addicted to substances, those tools work for everything yeah. on a daily basis. So we used some of those, we used some of the, the knowledge around that, knowledge that they all picked up, and we thought, well, how do we make people's lives easier by, you know, I've seen Facebook Lives, I've seen this, and we can make, we made this community called Happy Days, where just by changing a little, and you know, people post affirmations, which work great, but when you have a little community doing it, and it's not, it's just there, and we just speak and do this stuff, People resonate, and, they, and they, they start thinking, oh, man, I need this every day. Nice little quotes here, nice little quotes. They ever read it, just fires off the endorphins. Yeah, if you wake up on a Monday morning and you're having a bad, you yeah. got out of bed the wrong way or whatever, and you read something that's nice, it can... Exactly. Just so that's what Happy Days was. On the back of Happy Days, we've come up with some great ideas. Happy Days is a community developing. We've now created the Happy Hub, which is... Uh, still developing, it's, it's released, um, but it's, it's uh, a place where therapists, people like yourself, who now have a, uh, a program to offer people, uh, we ask them not to, to you know, give them a, um, a discount, let's say, but we, we do Facebook Lives with each person, give them a chance to uh, promote themselves on the platform. Um, and then they give us some of their content so people can look on the thing, they get a free you know, look at people's content and say, oh, wow, I like this person. Then they can choose they want to work with them. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and it's, it, it's fairly unique that way. I've not seen anything that was nearly similar. So, it, it, and, you know, the fact that there's a lot of people out there who have a journey and have a story. Loads of everyone has a story. Mm -hmm. But you don't get heard. So it gives a chance for people to get heard. And that's why people go and think, oh, I love that. Wow, your story's incredible. Your story's incredible. Yours, you know, so just about letting people do that and air their views. A bit like a YouTube for selfless development. development from my experience and the people i've been speaking to in my industry especially and also the, you know some actors and some it's, i said the entertainment industry loosely mm. uh you think about you know being successful for a period of time then you're now no longer you know it happened to me i you know uh, thankfully i had some tools to be able to deal with what that is but you know when you're, you're very successful and all of a sudden you're not yeah, the happen? wind takes the wind, is, pulls out of your sails, you know, exactly. Where do, you, where, do you, where do I go? What do I do? Who am I? What, I've got, what do I need to learn? How, all these questions. But mentally, mentally, you must be awful because, you know, you're significant one minute, the and next not, minute you're nobody, no right? Or no, one's no significance, no recognition, no nothing. And then that's what we deal with now because it happens so quickly because you can be a star overnight yeah. and then you're and not nobody. a star. These kids are getting, committing suicide. The rate's going up. So this is why we, we sort of... Um, so Tuned Out is a group, a sharing group. We've got, like, we've got some lovely speakers from all different walks of life, just people telling about how to, maybe through their experience, they've you know, created a better place for themselves to live. They all come from certain backgrounds or you know, had, had traumatic experiences or just how to achieve uh, against adversity. So, Do you think it's more men? I asked this question No, to... we, had, we had an equal balance last okay. time. Okay. So it wasn't aimed at men. You know, there's, there's, there's loads of men's groups, supporting groups, but I just think, you know, just come and share. Women, you know, women, I think to have both perspe perspectives is great. Women are the driving power behind men, don't forget. Of course we are. We're the maternal force. <laughs> yeah, they're the mums. They're the ones. But we're used to talking, and, and some men aren't. Yeah, you know, no, they, they, they keep it inside. But you know what? If women are here and men are able to talk, they will probably let them overcome even more. I mean, obviously, what they want to share is entirely up to them. They want to go to a men's group, go to a men's group. But... If it's about mental health, then, you know, a woman's perspective is always good. Why not? I mean, look, this is, this is all these fucking perceptions we get put up with. Women are the hunters, mate. They're the ones that go out and do the bloody yeah, work, you know? Yeah. I've seen it, we, even when I've talked about my cats today, 
Yeah, my, we're the hunters. My we're, girl cat, yeah. she brings all the stuff in. I've got squirrels, I get bloody mice, I get I rats. Bet, I bet that Tom just lies there, does nothing. He does nothing. He does nothing, yeah. Nothing. yeah. And then when he tries, tries it on, she clouts him. <laughs> yeah. And smacks him around the head and he goes... <laughs> um, so anyway, so <laughs> the group was open to anyone and I just think it was a, a nice thing. We had a lot of people last time. We've got a good turnout tonight. And we've got, um, as I said, next month we've got the Suicide Prevention Week. We've got dog therapy the month after. We may have Sir Bradley Wiggins talking. We've got... Oh, wow. Well, we'll put all that on the show notes as well. So okay, people can know, they'll know how to get hold of you and, or come um, along if they need to come and then we along. And you can send the link to tune out. The tickets, as you said, the room's not massive. We get about 50, 60 people and that's it. We can't take any more. Next month's a fundraiser for... Suicide um, prevention, and we've got a charity we're donating to. Uh, we have DJs. We're going to go on after the group. We've got some great talks. Um, lots going on at the moment. You know, I'm in touch with my DJing is really good. Uh, I'm you're talking well. about that, you're DJing. I'm still busy. You're still I'm DJing. Beginning. Still DJing. How long do you think it'll go on? Well, who knows? You know, I'm enjoying the music again, and uh, I'm, you know, uh, I was very fortunate that I was able to face my demons all them years ago and just carry on. And I did that. I went straight back to my beefer, faced it head on, and just carried on so otherwise I'd have ended up probably not but as I did because I was passionate about my music my music came over bloody anything else so your DJ you, you I just you went straight out of there I just you know what? people tried to no no just leave me out I might have none of it if I asked you what is the most important thing in your life well, I know I suppose, you have mentioned your cats but well yeah. no listen you know uh, I suppose now my values have changed mm. and you know uh, family Wendy uh, my cats Stuff that, you know, you can hug at the end of the week or the day yeah. and, uh, you know, that hunger oxytocin thing. Look, my, life, my life's important to me now. My health is mm. important to me now. Because without my health, without anyone's health, You've got nothing you right. can't help anyone, yeah. can you? You cannot yeah. help yourself. If you can't help yourself, you can't help others. We know that's an old cliche saying, but it's not cliche, is it? It's actually true. If you're unwell, and, you know, my mental health, I, I look after that because, you know, I still have moments. We all do. And... Uh, Thankfully, I've learned a lot, so I know why it's doing it. I know what's happening. You know, I, I, I'm very grateful where I am today. I'm loving talking to you and uh, being part of this whole thing. And um, have you got another book in you? Yeah, of life course. and lines of yeah, well, the next block. one, the next one, the name's already been penned. Go on, can we? Can we? Can you tell me? Go in on. between the lines. In between the lines, I love it. And Brandon, my last question, and yeah. I ask this to all my guests: If you were to write a message in a bottle. For future generations to find, what would that message be? Don't let the bastards get you down. <laughs> Brandon, thank you so much for having me on the team on my show. Thank you.